this is Ham Donishman. Thanks for joining. Today we're going to have another video on Barris' series of videos of training and today we're going to be talking about how to add new users from administration rights into the system. So where you have to go, this is our typical Verisys 1.0 device list. Where you have to go is under settings. You go directly into administration and this is where you actually add a new user. So I'm logged in as an administrator right now. That's why I have the rights to get into this section and see all these different users. So we're going to show you how to add a new user. So first thing you have to fill out is the name of the person. In this case, I'm going to pick on my wife. I'm going to just put in Nancy Donishman and give it a username, Nancy. And I'm going to give her a password. There's this. Let's see. I'll give it a new password here. And as you can see, it's blocked out. And you cannot see the actual password. You have to verify the password. And the last thing you have to do, you have to give her the rights, or at least the roles, that are associated with this, uh, with this new user. If this new user is important around being an administration administrator, so you have to select role as admin. We also have tech, we also have tenant. Tenant being the lowest. As far as being a tenant user, you basically have rights to looking at home pages and be able to see and view data. That's really all you can do with tenant. Uh, a tech gives you a little bit more rights around be able to add schedules and be able to change set points and do a certain amount of configuration of the equipment. But then obviously the admin gives you all the rights of everything you can do and all the changes that you can do within the system. So let's say at this point this is all I need to do. I don't need to associate any kind of alarm notification for this individual. I just hit save and I am done for this particular person. It did tell me this person was already exist, so I am going to give a different name. This was a good catch, I guess. I'm going to pick on my daughter. And we we'll give her a new name, and, and that would be it. And I'm not going to worry about the email right now. We're not going to worry about that. So I give her an admin, she's got a new password, and I'm going to hit save. And then now she will be added uh, to the system as the new uh, user. So in this case, um, since we had a duplicate in here, I'll show you how to delete a user. So you come in here. Let's say I don't need the Nancy be involved in the system anymore. I hit delete, and you delete the user, and she is gone. The other feature within the uh, administration adding a new user is uh, I'm going to go back into Sophie uh, user and this is where I could actually associate uh, a alarm notification to this particular user. So what that means is uh, if there is uh, internet connection, in this case obviously there is, and that's important, you have to have internet connection before alarm notification can actually work. So after you have the internet connection, then you can come in, add your users, and create the notification level that's needed. So we have three notification level, critical, service priority, and service. Uh, critical, pretty self-explanatory, means all the critical alarms within the system, things like smoke, dete uh, smoke detection, uh, things like uh, shutdowns, things like uh, high pressure trips. Uh, low pressure trips, any of those becomes a critical fault. And that's really what's inside of that table of critical and be notified to this particular uh, person. The service priority is just another list of service higher priority from a service maintenance type faults. A key thing to know here is that if I do select service priority for SOPI, uh, not only she gets service, but she also gets critical faults as well. Same thing with service. If I click service, now she gets all the faults that are being generated for the system. So keep that in mind, please. Um, the other thing to really recommendation more than anything, if you are setting up a, a user from a tenant perspective, you know, facility manager or whoever that's really around the system day to day, you really want to set them up as critical unless they really want to be notified on everything. Uh, a service 
that's a lot of faults that can be generated and a lot of these are not important they're more maintenance type alarms so I would just keep in mind that you know if you are setting up for service that's really for somebody that maintaining the system so we're going to keep it as uh, critical for right now and um, there's two email settings that we could put in here you could either put two different emails uh, for this particular individual or you could put one email address and use the second uh, email address block of actually putting text information in there and I'll show you how to do that so for first thing I'm just gonna say email so we're gonna just make up an email and this would be her email address and uh, so that's really all you do you hit it there and you set it there and you save it and you're done um, all right, let me go back my mouse kinda interrupted me there a little bit I wanna put that information back in um, and if I hit save and that information is in so now we have an email address associated with Sophie so now let's talk about texting now you don't have to put an email address you could just put this next uh, configuration that I'm about ready to show you if you just want to be text and that's all you want in the case of Sophie or in case of what I'm used to AT&T is my typical phone carrier so there's every carrier has a specific SMS texting configuration that you have to put in as an email to you actually get a text on your phone it goes out as an email that's how we will send it out but the carrier at the email address gets changed into a text and that's how it comes to your phone so it's really simple uh, again for AT&T I want to just put in a phone number here and so you put the actual phone number you don't have to put a one in front of it just the area code and the number and then for AT&T is uh, txt.att.net that is the abbreviation you would need with the phone number any phone number in this section here and that becomes even, even though it's an email address it, go, it will go out as a text to your phone you hit save and that will complete the setting of Sophie as as administrator with critical faults and then she will get both email and text going out at the same time again you don't have to have both you can just delete one of them so if you just want text just send text if you just emails just send the email the other thing I want to show before I end this video it's really I did a Google um, I did a Google search and found all the different carriers uh, have different string for SMS texting so again this is a video you could pause it you could take the information down and really based on what I'm seeing the top five is really right here I've already shown the AT&T which is txt.att.net for uh, Verizon you would have to put in the number then at etext.com so really all you would need let's say if Sophie was a Verizon user uh, you take the the last uh, vtext.com and I will just change the txt.att.net to vtext.com um, and then save it and uh, I guess that didn't back into it just put this in a little while ago and it should have worked so if I put in a new phone number and um, 502 let's say 550 440T and then it would be at vtex.com uh, not two V's not two ats and really messing up this video let's see the at text.com and you save and that would be it so that's how you would do a rise this concludes this video I hope you can join us for few, uh, other videos that we will have on our website thank you for joining